Hi YouTube, this is Die Fly Fish. I just want to show you this other experiment that I just did, and this will be the last one I'm going to be doing for a little while. Um, in any event, I made another test tube cell with the zinc oxide Epsom salt galena iron pyrite mix. I added a little bit of crystal kitty litter to it and um, melted it, rehydrated it, placed it in here. And I have a carbon copper electrode that's used for welding here. Here we have the magnesium electrode, and right there is an itty bitty tiny 0.5 millimeter graphite. Um, pencil lead. And I'm going to put the rest as far as the importance of the ratios of size of anode to cathode right now. So in any event I have this set at the 20 volt setting and again the cell was made a little while ago but I just want to show you the differential in voltage. So if I place the electrode on the large cathode we're seeing a nominal 1.65 volts Okay, now if I place it on the graphite one, did you notice that? Now that's the same cell. It's not even a differential between cells, that's just the way this is uh, being read. So, in any event, you see quite a dramatic increase in voltage coming out of the little itty bitty electrode versus um, the larger electrode. So, for what it's worth, again, the anode to cathode ratio and voltage seems to be um, very important. So now what we'll do is turn this over to the milliamp hour, and I have not looked at this yet, so this should be sort of fascinating. We'll find out what the dead short current is. Yes, I know we could put the load cell in load, but again, I'm, I'm not to that stage yet. So in any event, um, we have it normalized. Here we have off the large cathode. I'm not even sure what it's going to read. Five or six, that's okay. Fair enough. Now let's read what it's showing on the smaller pencil lead graphite cathode. Pretty dramatic, isn't it, guys? And again, I can't make this any more clear. Uh, it's the same cell, for gosh sakes. It's uh, interesting, without a doubt. So. So for what it's worth, you know, again, this is just the differential between anode and cathode size, um, current and voltage. And I somehow question whether or not normal galvanic cells would act as such. So again, that's 5.2 milliamps as compared to... about 8 milliamps. So for what it's worth, again, same cell, same electrolyte, same anode, different size cathodes. Have a great night. Okay guys, um, one last item in detail, um, especially with regard to what John Bedini said about cells impedance, which I think is um, absolutely spot on and correct. So in any event, just want to show you, here is the mega ohm uh, reading as far as the large cathode Okay, 2.1 mega ohm is what it's reading. And here is what it reads for the smaller cathode. Let me get my hand line up there. About 5.9. So there's a large difference in resistance between the two 2.1 mega ohm to 5.9 mega ohm. Um, and again, just to reiterate you know, what we're registering for voltage. So there's no more mystery, I suppose. Um, that's okay, so I can leave it there. So again, out of the small cathode, we're reading 2.46 volts. Out of the large cathode, same cell, reading 1.6 volts. Fair enough? So I welcome any and all input, insights, and or comments. Thanks for um, watching this. Thanks for putting up with my other experiments. And... Uh, there you have it. Right, it looks like the cell's going up, at least on that one. That's pretty cool. So in any event, we'll see how she settles down overnight, but so far, that's what we're staring at. So again, the resistance between the two carbon electrodes, 
is definitely there. Have a great night.